So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. This is show 540, I think. Um, we uh, have been taking a trip around and visiting various LRNG and other kinds of networks. Um, we started down in Orlando and uh, met um, a, an educator from Springfield last week and this week. We are not in Pittsburgh, but we have somebody who is a, well, you'll describe yourself, an assistant superintendent, are you, in, in near yes, Pittsburgh? Sir. Yep. And um, so, uh, Ken, uh, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit here? Sure, sure. Um, my name is Ken Lockhead. I am the assistant superintendent of the Avonworth School District in Pittsburgh. We're just north of uh, downtown Pittsburgh. Um, and we're a, a public school, a suburban school, and we service uh, about 1,700 kids, uh, K through 12. And so uh, we've been um, very fortunate to be in Pittsburgh. In New um, York, that's a massive school. That's <laughs> way too big for us. No, it is. I was, you know, because the small schools move. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. But we're very fortunate in Pittsburgh uh, to be a part of a, a larger learning network called the Remake Learning uh, Network. Uh, that just celebrated last year its 10th anniversary um, and it's a group of, of school districts um, nonprofits foundations museums uh, ed tech startups you know, universities who all share resources and work together to to make um, you know Pittsburgh the best place to, to have kids and, and to, to learn together yeah it's an amazing site in terms of how much documentation there is and that book I particularly like um, forget the name of it immediately but there's a whole book there as well and, and lots of examples and so yeah go check out the site it's amazing so you guys have been doing this for 10 years you and I were chatting earlier I was joking that you're in st. Louis making another network that so tell me a little bit about networking like and how important that is to your work well, it's it's vitally important to to our work, um, and you know I, I think you know I realized a long time ago, and I think certainly people in our region in Pittsburgh realized that you know learning happens not just in the classroom but outside, and so I think it's important to connect learning to the real world, um, making partnerships, um, and, and have have them work in different ways, whether it's as simple as having someone from the outside as a guest speaker, or more in depth than you know, having uh, a, a institution or person work in a, a project-based learning uh, opportunity for students where they're really engrossed in um, in doing relevant learning and giving support and feedback to our students. So the networking uh, it really helps um, you know us grow and give our kids the exposure and the experiences that they really need. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're here. To one thing. I mean, we met very. I, I think we met. For, very briefly, were you out in Irvine, like in October, and at the kickoff of this, or not? I, I was at the uh, DML conference. Or, I'm yeah. Sorry, I wasn't at DML, anyway. but yeah, I think I did. We did meet briefly in in the Bay, Bay Area. So we've been in some of the same rooms, but um, you had a DML six grant as well, um, as as we did here uh, with the National Writing Project, um, and um, and I met a principal from your school district, I think, in Chicago, and a teacher yes. who, who are doing work on um, a galleries project, which I think goes beyond that grant, right? Bef started before that, but continues through it. So that's where we're going to start, but then you want to also talk about the personal pathways um, project that you kind of imagine where some of this might go. Is that just to let people know what we're going to talk about here? Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so our Pittsburgh Galleries project is a great example of, of networking and partnerships. And, and so that was created about four years ago. Uh, and uh, when that I was long a, ago. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the principal of the high school uh, at the time and uh, just looking at ways to connect kids. So we had this group of kids who um, were kind of, these, you know, arts related kids that didn't really know what they wanted to do. Um, and we just put together this idea of we'll contact the local museums and galleries and, and um, see if we can give kids experiences and exposure to what it's like to be in a museum and to actually curate an exhibit. Um, and so we got a small grant through the Sprout Fund, a local foundation in Pittsburgh, to kind of kick us off 
Um, and we partnered with five museums, um, including the Andy Warhol Museum, uh, the Carnegie Museum of Art, the Mattress Factory, which is installation art, uh, the Tunesium, and the Pittsburgh Glass Center. So we had a lot of different um, uh, mediums of art, so it was pretty diverse. Um, and we had about 35, 40 kids uh, for the first year. They didn't have to have an art class. You just, if you were interested, we, we pitched it to them. And, and the first thing we did was to go visit the museums and, um, but go with the lens where they had to, to like, why do you think they have lighting the way it is? Why are things positioned the, the way they're positioned? And, um, and then they got to really interact with. And, and So was this your idea or a teacher's idea or when you were the principal? You were the principal when this kicked off? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I, it was an idea that I had, and then I approached our, our two art teachers right. and then cool. sort of leveraging the network within Remake Learning. I'm like, hey, I have this idea. What do you think about us? working together to you know, have kids get exposure, first of all, at the museums for the first half of the year, then actually apply what they learn and curate an exhibit on our campus with our museum partners. And so um, we did it, and it worked out, and we got a great, we were very received, well received by our partners who gave us extra time. Um, it, the kids got exposure to different things, and it really, again, unlocked kind of it's what LRNG is, try to unlock experiences and opportunities for kids uh, we had other opportunities. They would contact us and say, "We have uh, we had the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh, who wasn't even involved in the first year, knew what we were doing, and said, well, we have this artist from Detroit doing this tapescape exhibit where he basically made this huge sculpture that that had lighting and everything, um, and kids can crawl around, and was was beautiful. But he needed they needed help to do it. So our kids got to go and and work with the artist to help install it, and so." I really gave a lot of experiences, and then we opened and premiered the uh, exhibits um, at our uh, district art show, and got some local coverage from um, um, our, our local papers, and just kind of kicked off. And so we continued it um, even after the um, the grant was just a little seed money to get started, but for the most part, it was cost us field trips, and and uh, with the, all the kids work they did, you know, extra time on their own. So they put up shows in the the school building is that right yeah or, so they, or elsewhere yeah. um in our on our campus and so it's really helped uh, really change the physical environment of our campus where kids have ownership and so we have uh, a london phone booth that's a charging station that's from the mattress factory that's now a regular piece in, in our high school lobby uh, the first Warhol group, um, and the War Andy Warhol group is always the ones that have some controversy, which is, I guess, appropriate. Uh, they took over this whole wall and did this um, uh, kind of Warhol-esque uh, Warhol designs, but then had these pop divas screen printed all across the hallway in the high school. Um, uh, we had another Warhol group, this, I think the second or third year, uh, looked at our our uh, hallowed walls of valedictorian and salutatorian pictures and and uh, put up an exhibit um, that took screen printing of pop culture sort of nefarious figures like Charlie Sheen, and, you know, Kim Kardashian, Justin mm -hmm. Bieber, and inter interspersed those folks with um, our valedictorians with the question of you know what do we value? <laughs> you know, so. So all these things, a lot of the exhibits stay. Some have come up, some have come down. But it's really changed the the the, uh, the physical environment. Uh, it's given ownership um, in the kids and what the environment looks like. Um, and now going into our, our just finishing our fourth year, the, the the first year was, can we really do this? Can we really change colors? It's not the school colors. Can we do this? To what can we do next? So it, it's really um, really helped the culture, honestly. Yeah, I mean, within that, and I know this from the stories that were told in Chicago back in March, but the um, there's also negotiating with the janitors and the the other people in the building as well. Is that correct? Yeah, so, so we, we wanted kids to, to not only, you know, get that art exposure, but also work with life skills and soft skills. And so, you know, so if they have to, to move a bulletin board or they need to put drill a hole, a hole in the wall, I mean, they have to get that permission, and we don't ask the the sponsor, the teacher sponsor to do that. We asked the kids to set up a meeting to make, make that appointment. Um, and so we have a whole process where, you know, they explore during the first year, but then they actually have to put together a proposal and present it. We invite um, our head of grounds um, and uh, um, uh, facilities. We, we bring in our superintendent, 
and all the mentors from the museums come and, and they give the kids feedback on their proposals and either green light them or, or uh, give them some recommendations to come back and then present it again. So uh, we want to give kids an opportunity to, to not only kind of do the cool stuff and create art, but then sometimes actually, you know, collect art to display, um, but they also have to go through the process of, you know, measuring it and asking permissions and um, kind of going through things that anyone else would have to go through in a public place. All right, so we did say that this was part of LRNG, so I'm curious already about how much of this we could do ourselves and or are, are all your <laughs> are all your XPs local XPs or did is there a way to think about transferring this to other locations? Well, I think it could be replicated into other locations. I mean, we're, we're working with particular museums, but, you know, we right. have uh, on our, our badge, you know, uh, on the playlist, we have, you know, a museum visit, you know, and, um, you know, kids have to come with uh, uh, feedback with what they saw, you know, how, and, and we, we started with each, each museum with a particular exhibit. So that can be replicated, you know, of how, how, the, how is the lighting designed? Why is the lighting designed the way it is? Is there um, music? Is there sound? If, if there is, why? What does it do for the atmosphere? Um, you know, what's the traffic pattern like? You know, why do you think it is designed the way it is? And so that can be done, I think, and replicated in any place. You know. Interesting. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so we're gonna let's let's look at let's look at the um, playlist that you've come up with. Um, you and other teachers have built this. Is that correct? I think. Um, yes. And as you're doing it, I'll keep talking. <laughs> Quick sidebar: um, one one of my um, heroes in the world is John Cage, and one of the last things he did um, was to curate a show um, at the New Museum, and he curated. He, he brought in objects from all the other museums in New York, <laughs> uh, and and being John Cage, he chose things that. Are, um, from their catalog um, by chance operations, so, <laughs> but, but the idea, the idea that you could curate, like, in a museum is is a fascinating thought. I, that sidebar had nothing to do with your project. It just reminded me of something that was quite wonderful to see. <laughs> to go to that one museum and see all the museums represented, but, yeah. So, you ready to share? Sure, let me go down to the uh, XPs here. Can you see those? Uh, you're not sharing the screen yet. Here. Oh, okay. You will in a second. We want to get into, I, it's fast. You know, um, Susan, Mc, Susan McLaughlin, her name, in Springfield thought she was the only person who deals with schools and, <laughs> and LRNG. Um, so it's, so we want to get into that a little bit too, like um, how you deal with both outside world and school world and make those connections. Sure. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, describe what you've got going on here. Okay, so we have a playlist to put to, we put together, and uh, we have two art teachers um, who have really helped to drive it and uh, did a, did a lot of the groundwork for this. So Ken, do you mind? Is it okay to call you Ken? I'm sorry, Ken. Ken. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you mind just reading the introduction? Because it's worth thinking about more slowly that way. I know you've described it already. But, yeah. Sure, sure. Oops. Uh, this looks like we... Yeah. Uh, something's hanging up. Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm here. Okay. Can you see the screen or no? Yeah, but it's um, pixelating. Yeah, I'm at a hotel, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, do the best you can. Yeah. But <laughs> maybe on the, maybe it's on the second tab up there instead of the one you're on. And yeah, here we go. Yeah, good enough. We can we can see it. Okay. Well, I'll read the description as you asked. This is um, great. The Pittsburgh Galleries Project is a collaboration between students at Avonworth High School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and five museums in the city, including the Carnegie Museum of Art, the Pittsburgh Glass Center, the Andy Warhol Museum, the Mattress Factory, and the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. 
With this project, student teams work alongside museum and gallery professionals to learn about the behind the scenes world of art museums before curating exhibits on the Avonmore School District campus as their partnering museums. And so we have these series of experiences that the students go through um, this, um, this yeah. project. Read them quickly and then we'll go back and look at a couple. How about that? Yeah. Sure. So it starts with a museum visit. In some cases, it's probably more than one. We started with doing one, um, but we found out that we, you know, the kids wanted more and, and the museum partners wanted uh, more time. So um, we spent the first half of the year doing visits with the different museums. Wow. Um, so you get to visit each of those museums more than once? Uh, it it depends upon the the museums and kind oh, of what can happen, but but at least at least once and sometimes more than once. And then, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, it um, sometimes we would be we would be invited to to see something different just because of um, they thought it would be um, interesting for our students. Say a little more about the mattress museum because you said it's the Wait. The, ma the mattress factory. Yeah, it, it may not Factors, be. Then. The Mattress Factory, yeah, um, it may, it's not as uh, well known possibly as the Andy Warhol Museum or the Carnegie Museum, but uh -huh. it's a wonderful uh, museum. It's installation art. They actually have multiple buildings um, in uh, a really neat area of Pittsburgh. Um, and they have a lot of um, artists that they have in residence that come from across the, the country um, to do their work. A lot of things come up and a lot of things go down. So there, there's some installations that are, are permanent and some that aren't. Um, and it's usually kind of some, some of the things are out there sometimes. Um, but it's um, really interesting. And a lot of it um, takes up a lot of space so that they have some larger uh, pieces that they do. Cool. All right. And the glass one? Uh, so we have the Pittsburgh Glass Center as well, and they do a, a lot of um, beautiful work, and they, they have an incredible uh, facility and workshop. Um, and so students can create different glass work, and then they have a gallery actually within their facility, um, but they also have a lot of classes. And so it's basically glass art from anything from that can be tiny to large, very large pieces as well. Cool. And, and a lot of their pieces um, appear throughout um, I think probably across the country, but a lot of things um, that have been done there have appeared uh, at the Phipps Gallery um, in Pittsburgh, which is also a well-known uh, botanical garden, but it's basically a museum as well. All right, so yeah, I, I said we were gonna go fast and then I slowed you down immediately. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so students are also required to, to create a, a pr presentation or do a proposal and present that proposal to museum experts and to um, folks that would be involved in making decisions, of allowing them to do different spaces. Um, then they have the experience of developing and creating um, and producing. Uh, in most cases, they actually produce the art. And in, in, in a few cases, they had to actually gather and curate and borrow the art. Um, our first year that we did this, we worked with the Tune Museum, which is um, a cartoon museum. And, and I think there's only two, I believe, dedicated to uh, museums dedicated purely to cartoon art. One is in Pittsburgh, and one is in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, and the year we did that, it was actually the 75th anniversary of Batman. And so our group did a whole exhibit, uh, a Batman exhibit. And so we got art from um, different uh, collectors uh, from the Toon CM, had some in their collection that they loaned us. Um, and some comic book artists, actually, we reached out to them and donated uh, some work and pieces. Huh. Uh, then we also do a, a, a peer review. So they actually uh, create, but also critique each other's work. Um, and then we have the, the exhibit itself. And so um, they go through a whole process and are actually um, exhibiting their work uh, in an art show that we hold uh, every May. So I'm a bit confused, if I can, uh, about how much of it is curating other people's art and how much of it is making your own, or? Uh, for the most part, I mean, the, yeah. the original idea was it to be both, but for the most part, it's turned into um, students creating the art within mm -hmm. that style of the museum that they're working with. Okay. Uh, uh, but we did have a, a, a couple of cases where we had uh, other art that we brought in, uh, but it was... Uh, I think easier and more interesting for them to be able to create. So kids with the Warhol would do screen printing. We've had uh, uh, photography exhibits with the Carnegie. 
um, all kinds of different installations with the mattress factory. Uh, but those are all things that the students created with their museum partners uh, in something that would be similar to what they would see in those museums. So even though you guys are only 10 miles out of Pittsburgh, does this enlighten, sort of let kids know what what's there? Is yeah. there a civic pride part of this? or? Oh, oh for sure. And, and, and some, some kids have been familiar with the museums and some have not. And so it's really kind of opened up their eyes and to realize what's out there and, and, um, and kind of a new world for, for a lot of students. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's been really good, great exposure. Cool. So I noticed you're still in the back end of, and that's maybe why it was hard to find earlier. Uh, do you know if this has been published yet or not? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. That's uh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. But let's look at the badge if we could. And oh, I don't know if you can. Can you? Yeah, you can. Okay. What happened? Did it go there or not? You might not be able to click on. You might have to look at it a different way since it's not published. You're in preview, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can do it that way. <laughs> um, since we're, I'll wait for you to finish. Not edible. Well, it's published, <laughs> so. I'm not yeah, yeah. It. Okay. I might have gone in some sort of back doorway that I had when I created. You know, we. There you are. So now you need to look for. We were going to look at the badge. So you got to change playlist to badge. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. We can wait. It's good. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm trying up. to find it for you. So. so up there under content manager, uh, you go to con see where it says playlists. You want to change out the badges. There we go. Yeah, okay. there you go. Main drafts. Yeah, now we'll be able to see it. Good. All right. So just all right. That introduction. I see more or less what you said already, but the criteria, you mind reading through those? Sure. Just curious, yeah. The criteria, art interpretation through museum visit, brainstorming to create exhibit concepts inspired by museum exhibit, mm -hmm. collaboration with peers in the creation of concept presentation and execution of the exhibit, mm -hmm. presentation of the project to museum partner and other stakeholders, that would be uh, like facility managers, our superintendent and so forth. Uh, project proposals must include a budget, space, and safety concerns, peer review and critique of the proposal, creation of gallery space or installation art on the campus, time management and problem solving during the creation of the exhibit, because there's actually a deadline, they have to have it done before the art show, and then to attend the art show and exhibit opening for the project to talk to the public and answer questions about their work. Hmm. And what's, what's the opportunity? Uh, with this project, student teams work alongside museum partners uh, to, to learn behind the scenes. And I think a lot of it's um, actually ex exposure uh, to, um, you know, potentially further work within, within art and, uh, and looking at the application they have. Um, uh -huh. and, has, has that happened? Has there been, like, kids it, going it, and work with the museums more somehow? It has. We've had some kids do some... Um, uh, intern work, uh, the mattress factory has been really great with kids, and, and we've had students who who were going to study, you know, something else that was not art related, and, and were really interested in that piece of it. You know, and some kids who haven't changed, but really were exposed and can bring that piece to what they're doing, whether it's engineering or, or something else. Cool. So they're exposed to graphic design and all kinds of different things. So this looks like it's almost ready to publish, but I heard what you said, you know, you, you look like a little shy to publish it because <laughs> you can't change it then and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I think this has actually been published, but I'm... It has been published somewhere. Oh, okay. But it yeah. says it's not. Okay. Maybe a different version has been. 
But talk a little bit about the process. Like, who's building this? Um, do you build it with the partners? Do you uh, do you imagine you could or that kind of stuff? You know, I think getting input from them has been important, and and, mm -hmm. and really our two art teachers have done a lot to to um, to work with this particular badge. So. Um, I'm impressed by the criteria being really thought through and clear that you have experience. Yeah. Well, well what this has really done is really kind of opened our eyes to, and, and we have a lot of discussions in our district about grading and assessment, and, and mm -hmm. what does a grade tell you, you know, uh, an A, B, and not, not a whole lot of information. Um, mm -hmm. We want to have other ways so we can communicate what students are doing. We can communicate mastery of different things, and, and we see badging as a, a way to do that. Um, Certainly uh, on grade levels below high school, I think it's a lot easier because you're not dealing with the high school transcripts. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we're looking at opportunities. And so what the work that we've done with badging with this project, we're looking at expanding into our, what we used to be called our career academies, but we're changing our, have changed to our personal pathways program uh, to create badges that kids can um, earn through the, the, their experience through high school that will help prepare them for college and career readiness. And to display those badges, we're, and we're still in the process of how to work with this, not only digitally, but also send it out with their transcripts. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be actually getting together with some admission counselors within our region, um, I'm hoping to before August, and um, we'll have a discussion of, you know, what currency do these badges, you know, can have um, on a college um, application with because we sent an informational sheet that goes along with their transcripts Kenneth um, keep talking but maybe come back um, by closing this for a second yeah I just want to see you again there you go <laughs> hi we're back so yeah so have you I, I, I heard that description of what you said we've we thought a little bit about how how to give credit through badging, and we haven't gotten there yet, too. But so, have you thought about that? Like, could there be a certain set of badges? If you get these badges, then you get credit. Or, well, the badges will be part of of what they do through their experience. So we're trying to integrate this within what they're doing within the curriculum. You know, so but we wanted different ways to display what they're learning instead of just a, a letter grade that's more specific. That has the visual piece with the you know with the uh, the icon, but also has you know as we described the criteria of all the things that they've done. Um, mm -hmm. So we're still kind of processing that kind of through that of what it can look like and, and what currency it can have. And we've actually worked with um, two other school districts in our area, and, uh, and one in particular that we uh, they have a similar setup with. As our pathways programs, they have their kind of career academies in different areas of health and medicine and STEM uh, and so forth that um, you know, they're interested in. So we actually got our teachers together to create you know, what are some career badges that would kind of go along with just the idea of our career academies, our respective career academies, but also what are, can be some specific badges within those different kind of industry areas like health and medicine and public and international affairs and so forth. So. And I, I, Will they be developing this on the LNG platform or elsewhere, or how well, are they doing? We're not sure that that's kind of where we are actually talking about what platform <laughs> that would be the best to use. So uh, we started uh, putting a career badge on that is not published for career, uh, communication skills for career readiness um, that we put a fair amount of work into. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so we're 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 um, just kind of at that crossroad of deciding how to, to work with it, but also. And, and building excitement within our region with our uh, universities and, and colleges of, you know, what can this mean for, you know, does this give them additional information on making decisions about students um, and, and how badging can have currency? Uh -huh. Has anybody yet, I mean, th that's not published yet. I'm imagining it hasn't happened yet, but have, have you assessed badges yet through the platform or, or not yet? Uh, n not yet, not yet. Because okay. so. that's a whole nother process, mm -hmm. and it's a very interesting process because anybody who's who's who you've given permission to can assess the badge then, and then 
And then there's a lot of conversations that need to happen between the teachers who are working with the students, maybe the teachers who built the playlist, and, and maybe the assessors, the same people, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. And those are really valuable conversations, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I like how the bad, your badge is set up. I, through the National Writing Project, I've, I've been doing some of the assessment work. And the better that criteria is set up, the easier it is to do the assessment work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's that, that whole process you guys could jump into too. Yeah, it's a challenge and there's, you know, um, we, we don't want to, to put everything on the teachers to make this extra work. We'd like to work differently and kind of approach this as, you know, a better way to display learning. And, mm -hmm. and you know, how can we assess and, and publish it to not just the, the parents or so, that, you know, it's not something a kid just gets and no one sees. But, you know, again, also, you know, how can they use it to, um, you know, further themselves through you know, getting a job or, um, you know, applying for a college? So it's on LRNG's list to get to. You would bump it up pretty high that you ought to be able to display their badges somewhere, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need that pretty fast if we can. It would be nice. Um, it would make a big difference, I think. So can you show or talk about the Pathways work a little more? Sure. So, go to so that. Yeah. I mean, that's where you're imagining this will go and you've started to talk about it but yeah, yeah so um we, we started several years ago or what we called at the time career academies and so we had five different uh, areas that try to cover everything but they're very broad so we have a, a health and medicine academy a stem academy business and entrepreneurship public and international affairs and innovative arts and so so the 1700 kids are divided into those five academies or well actually there would be 17 is our entire district that's not even oh, our okay sorry smaller portion uh, so we originally started it as an optional thing so it was non-threatening people kids can opt to do it uh and in one more year not next year but 18 19 we're developing it because we want all kids to go through um okay. because we're integrating things into what we're doing in school in the curriculum um we're using time and space differently we don't want juniors and seniors to sit in classrooms all day um, their last two years of high school. We want them to do job shadows, to have experiences, to connect their learning, to go deeper into learning, uh, to mash up courses, which we're currently doing. Um, and so we want this just to be part of their experience in mash up courses of, of having different content areas working together. Okay, and, sure. Yeah. Um, and, and so it, what we do have, uh, when students enter the ninth grade, we, they, they'll take an interest survey and then a career assessment and, and just kind of start exploring what they might be interested in and, and and a lot of times you know what they think they're interested in when they actually explore it decide that's not what they want to do which is great information as well you know um and along the way they may discover something else that may take them on a different pathway than what they you know thought they may have gone on and so you know we're trying to create experiences and and i created positions so we, we actually got rid of our department heads and i created uh, academy leaders who kind of helped lead this process and so with, for example, in health and how did, medicine. How did that go over? Was that a tough leadership thing you did there? Or? Um, a, a little, but not too much, because I think uh, we, I took people along for the ride and, and helping develop the vision with it. Um, mm -hmm. to, uh, career academies have been around a long, long time, you know, probably 40, 50 years. Um, so we did visit some places. And um, and so that I think you know the, the teachers are, who um, kind of the early adopters kind of got on board and helped drive and, and create enthusiasm for it but okay so for example in, in our health and medicine we you know we we go uh, on an annual trip at least twice a year where kids can see an open heart surgery and so they're actually looking down on an operating table there's like 15 to 18 people in the room everything from the surgeon and you know who's had you know, 10 to 15 years of schooling to a, a tech who has you know a, a year of schooling with different salaries and different jobs and uh, and the kids get exposed to those things, and um, and we have discussions and feedback you know, after that. Uh, so we, so you know, we want kids to come into an academy, and, and then we try to cater experiences for them. So within health and medicine, it could be anything from you know looking at wanting to be an occupational therapist to jobs that they didn't even know existed within that field, you know, with both health and medicine. So um, and that's that's how Pittsburgh is known these days too, right? I mean, the health fields are kind of 
Oh, for sure. And yeah, we have a lot yeah. of research hospitals, and and, uh, and so there's opportunities for students within our region, you know. To, mm -hmm. Um, so we want kids to start building actually a portfolio the ninth grade year that would include, you know, this uh, interest survey, the career assessment, um, you know, they begin to probably write their first resume, all these things that would start be included on the platform where we'd also want their badges to live, or at least have a, a, a mm -hmm. connection or a link to, to those, those badges. And so they can start building and displaying their experiences, um, and by the time that they to finish high school, they'll have this place that they'll go to that they can use, that they'll have um, models to pull from, from college application essays, I and mean, all those things will be part of this kind of living digital portfolio that we also want to include badges of things that they've earned along the way. Um, Sounds then, great. Do, is, there, is there a model anywhere you're looking at? or? Uh, there's not something exactly out there. Then there's bits and pieces at different places that we've seen, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we've seen different versions of uh, portfolios. Um, but we want to be thoughtful. We also want to be personalized. So we want students to be able to, you know, have some um, ownership in the creation of it. But we also don't want it, things to be all over the place and it's just this big mess, right? You know, so we want to have some organization you know, to it as well. So so we're working through a lot of those steps. And we've um, uh, formed an advisory council, so those five different academies or, or pathways from health and medicine to innovative arts and so forth, we have partnerships with folks to kind of help guide us of so what are your needs in the workforce, you know, and what do you think about what, what are some uh, skills that we you know, kids need to be able to, to learn or to uh, increase. Um, and so some of those conversations, I think, will creep into some of the badges and things we ask the kids mm -hmm. to be able to see where the pathways they go down quick thought <laughs> is if um this isn't the first time i've said this but um one of the things i dream is that on lrng uh youth would be able to do xps of you know kind of not necessarily connected to a playlist and then the playlist would be created by the youth um, to kind of define the pathway they've taken, right? Mm -hmm. That would, I think that would kind of fit what you're saying mm -hmm. better than, you know, a committee or a teacher somewhere setting up the playlist. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that could work at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we want to give ownership back to, to the students and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so we want to give a lot of exposure, you know, the first couple of years of, of high school in particular, where they go out and see things and get exposed to different uh, ideas and jobs and experiences. So where else, so would they earn badges in the hospital, in the gallery, in the, are there, are there after school programs? How, how I, I promised at the beginning, we talked a little bit about how you guys are imagining bridging between out of school and in school experiences. You said that a little bit, but is that where you're, can you say a little more about that? Yeah, so, so we're, I think we're envisioning kind of two sets of types of badges. So those for like career, college and career readiness and, and more of the career readiness piece that doesn't matter what area you're going into as far as, you know, I use the example of the communication for career readiness, career readiness that they have to have email etiquette and display that. Mm -hmm. They have to um, interview someone um, that's a professional. And then have evidence of that and, and put that on. Have to complete a job application. You know, have to set up a social media like LinkedIn. You know, so those would be sort of a, you know a part of the playlist. It would be sort of general kind of career related. But then there's also, I believe, opportunities within the each field, you know, or broad field, whether it's STEM field and so forth. Where and those were, I think, more where content. Yeah, more, more content and also you know more personalized with. You know, and we're, we're actually a small high school, you know, we have 1,700 K-12, our high school has about 480 oh, students. That's um, better. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that you know, they can really personalize their experience and they may be interested in something that, you know, um, we don't have a class on or, you know, but we'll try to find through these pathways and our connections in our network to give experience for that, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's where I think it may be where they can create their own their own pathways, right, with, with the badges. So we're at the very nascent stages, you know, of this, and um, but we're very excited about, you know, do, you know, doing this work. Cool. So what's next for you guys? 
Like, what, what, what are you going to do this year? <laughs> well, we're actually kind of, we're going to be actually building a lot of that uh, this year with the, with the pathways. Um, again, we're um, actually moving one-to-one -one, uh, next year, so that will help. So we're giving every kid a device to be able to, to do this and to build a portfolio. Cool. Um, and we're, as I mentioned about mashing up classes, we're starting to integrate learning more and, and try to de-silo our, you know, some of our, our high school courses and, and actually our middle school. It's a conference I'm actually at in St. Louis to work with project-based learning and, and working with integrated uh, content. Uh -huh. Very cool. Um, sounds, sounds pretty exciting. Uh, we could finish in the next few minutes here, um, unless there's a, any other big topics you want to cover. I, I did want to ask you, though, a little bit about what else you would want from LRNG to make some of this happen. We talked about the, the youth need a place to display their work. What, any other thoughts? I think it would be great if they can have a profile page and then they can have their badges and a link to it, you know? so. Um, and I think the more that LRNG grows nationally, it will again give credence and, and um, you know, currency to, to it of you know, having value, and that's on this sort of national movement. But I, I think that would be a, a good place for, for that. And I'm excited to see where you know, LRNG is as a platform than they were a year ago, because I think there has been some right. positive changes and, and – uh, but you know, I think sometimes we're we're we're, we're trying to move faster <laughs> and and trying to uh, kind of create things that may not be there yet, right? So, like but what? But I'm excited about the potential, certainly of it. Cool. Oh. Um, just looking up quickly, but I didn't see it. All right, so great talking to you. Um, let's let's keep connecting. Um, I, you know, I I hope I if it's true that's not that isn't published yet. I hope you get it published, and then we can all sort of play with it as well. Yeah, Makes sense. Yeah, I'll certainly yeah. I'll look into that and and talk to the folks there to see yeah. what we can do if it's not so. And, okay. and to, you know, we're, we're excited, too, of a part of being in, of involved in this project with the DML and, and the playlist is really getting exposure to some really great ideas and things that you know, folks are doing, including yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I know here our princi high school principal in Chicago and, and uh, uh, Gabrielle uh, one of Swaney, one of our art teachers who attended uh, in Chicago. Yeah, it was great to meet them. Mm -hmm. um, we're very excited about, you know, it's opened a lot of doors and, and, and um, kind of ideas for them. So. Very cool. All right. Thank you so much. We'll right. talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. you too.